have the pleasure of introducing Professor Adele O'Toole, who is a clinical academic and center lead of the Center of Cell Biology and Cutaneous Research at the Blizzard Institute, Barts in the London School of Medicine and Dentistry. She's an active research group working on rare and common genetic skin disease biology and is also an honorary consultant dermatologist at the Royal London Hospital, Barts Health NHS Trust. She trained in medicine at University College Galway in Ireland, followed by general medical and dermatology training in Dublin and London. She was a Dermatology Foundation, followed by a Howard Hughes Medical Institute postdoctoral fellow with David Woodley at Northwestern University in Chicago from 1994 to 1998. Her specialist clinical interests are ichthyosis and palmoplantar keratodomas, which we will be learning about today. She is currently clinical lead for the British Association of Dermatologists, Dermatology and Genetic Medicine Network. She is chair of the Medical Advisory Board of the Ichthyosis Support Group. She's on the steering committee of Pachyonychia Project and is actively involved in the 100,000 Genomes Project, a gene discovery project within the National Health Service in the UK. She is also on the board of the European Society of Dermatological Research and leads the Diversity Task Force. And last but not least, she's the most recent winner of the British Society of Investigative Dermatology Medal. So without further ado, Professor Adele O'Toole. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Monty, for that, that uh, very uh, nice introduction. Um, so I'm going to talk about the palmoplantar keratodermas uh, how to make a diagnosis uh, clinically, and the fact that there are therapeutic challenge and developments in that field. Uh, so these are my uh, disclosures, and I do not benefit personally from any of these uh, collaborations. So I work um, in Whitechapel in East uh, London, which is a very diverse uh, area. Uh, and this is our hospital here on the, the left in blue with the helicopter pad on top. Um, and I do research here um, at this building, which is just down the road from the hospital. Um, so my, my life in research and in the uh, clinic are, are appropriately blended. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple of things. I'm going to mention a small bit about the structure of the skin first. Then I'm going to talk about taking a history from a PPK patient. Um, I'm going to talk about diffuse PPK and the various types. I'm going to talk about uh, focal PPK, including pachynechia congenita and the differential diagnosis. I'm going to talk a little bit about other syndromic PPKs. I'm going to talk about things that can imitate PPK. And I'm also going to talk about management of PPK and uh, advances in the field. So keratodermas in general are caused by mutations in structural uh, proteins within the skin. And examples include uh, mutations in keratin genes. So keratins are the most abundant uh, protein expressed in keratinocytes, the cells in the epidermis. Um, you can also get uh, mutations in structured proteins that stick the keratinocytes together, for example, uh, desmosomal proteins uh, such as uh, desmoplakin, uh, gap junction proteins such as connexins, and adherence uh, junctions proteins. This uh, schematic shows the expression of various uh, keratins in the skin. As you know, uh, keratins come in pairs, uh, so, for example, in the basal epidermis, you've got keratin 5 and 14. In the suprabasal epidermis, you've got keratin 1 and keratin 10. When you get a mutation in a keratin gene, uh, many of those uh, mutations cause uh, PPK. Um, keratin 9 is particularly important because that's expressed in Palmer skin. Um, keratin 1 and 10, uh, keratin 1, is highly expressed in Palmer skin. And then um, associated with PPK, we often can get hair or sebaceous gland abnormalities. So note keratin 17, for example, uh, which is mutated in pachynechia congenita, 
is expressed in the sebaceous gland um, and it's also expressed in the outer root sheath of the hair follicle as are keratin 16 and keratin 6a, b and c. So when I see a patient with uh, palmoplantar crash derma, if I haven't met them before, I ask all of these questions. I ask the age the PPK was noted. I ask about blistering. I ask about infections, including fungal infection. I ask about pain. Do they have pain in their feet? I ask about progression over time. I ask how the palms and soles change when they're immersed in water. I ask if their hands are warm or cold. I ask about sweating. I also ask about any problems with hair, nails, teeth, gums, or sweating um, generally, and you'll see why as I go through this talk. I'll ask about any other medical problems. I ask about family history. Is this sporadic? Is it autosomal dominant? Is it autosomal recessive? I ask about family history of cancer. I ask if the parents are related. If not, are the parents from the same area, for example, a rural town or island? Um, when I examine, I look at the palms and soles. I look at the elbows and knees in particular. I look at for, for follicular hyperkeratosis or prominent follicles, especially around the waistline and on the thighs. I look for cysts, axilla, presternal area, genital area, buttocks. I look at the hair, nails, teeth, oral mucosa and the tongue. So this is an example of diffuse panoplantar keratoderma. We call it diffuse because the uh, thickening um, extends completely across the soles and completely across the palms. And there's no sparing at the base of the toes. It can extend up onto the Achilles tendon, as you can see here, uh, or onto the wrist. The commonest palmoplantar keratoderma is diffuse epidermolytic PPK, which is caused by mutations in keratin 9 or keratin 1. Um, it's a diffuse keratoderma with an onset in infancy, and it's autosomal uh, dominant. Um, as you can see from the, this patient, which is fairly classic, in the upper left panel, you can see that there's a uh, fissuring uh, of the keratoderma, and that's quite classic in uh, keratin 9 mutations. Sometimes you can get transgradients onto the toes, and you can also get hyperkeratosis in areas of friction, for example, over the Achilles tendon. And if you do biopsy these patients, but I don't really do that anymore, you would see epidermolysis in the upper spinous and granular layers. Epidermolytic ichthyosis, uh, previously known as epidermolytic hyperkeratosis or bolus ichthyosis vulnerabilitoderma, uh, can also cause a panoplantric keratoderma um, when you've got mutations in keratin 1. Again, this is a diffuse uh, PPK. And a clue that it might be um, epidermolytic ichthyosis as opposed to a keratin 9 mutation might be hyperkeratosis in the flexures. So, for example, in the popliteal and antecubital fossae, or a definite history of uh, blistering. Diffuse non epidermolytic palmoplantar keratoderma of the botnia type is a diffuse waxy pick hyperkeratosis from the first year of life. Uh, you can get curvature of the nails and dermatophyte infection and pitted keratolysis are common. So you can see uh, that this patient here in the uh, lower panel, the dorsum of the hands is, is affected and that's likely to be all fungal infection and we'll go away with the treatment. Um, this is a, a teenager that I saw who has uh, this type of uh, palmoplantar keratoderma. And as you can see, she's got this erythema extending onto the dorsum of the foot and onto the medial aspect of the foot, onto the dorsum of the fingers. And all of that erythema went away with uh, oral terbenafine. So this type of PPK is caused by mutations in aquaporin 5, 
aquaporins are water channels in the skin. And one uh, distinctive um, feature of this type of keratoderma, all keratodermas will go a bit white when you put them in water. But in this case, the hands get quite spongy and the whiteness and the sponginess lasts for up to half an hour. They also can get corny bacterium uh, super infection causing pitted keratolysis. Nagashima type PPK is a similar type of PPK, which is recessive. Um, again, it's water uh, sensitive with frequent dermatophyte infection. There's marked erythema, but less hyperkeratosis, uh, as you can see here. It's caused by mutations in serpin uh, B7. Serpin B7 is expressed in the very upper part of the epidermis. So that's why the uh, phenotype is uh, milder. And, um, recently, uh, Ellie Sprecher's group just described this new autosomal recessive PPK uh, caused by mutations in serpin A12. Um, these patients have diffuse PPK with erythema and they showed that they have decreased calocrine 7 activity and decreased corneodesmosin and desmotely in one expression. Uh, but it's not severe enough to cause uh, blistering, but they do get, get peeling of the skin. Maldemaleda is one of the most severe diffuse uh, PPKs. Uh, this has a typical appearance. You get this diffuse white uh, macerated appearance, which you can see in the left upper panel. And there frequently is transgradients onto the dorsum of the hands, uh, dorsum of the feet. And you can also see that there's uh, hyperkeratosis around the ankles. These patients frequently have perioral erythema and chelitis and also have nail abnormalities. So maldemaleda is autosomal recessive. Uh, it's caused by mutations in a gene called ARS, which encodes the SLARP1 uh, protein. Um, SLARP1 is known to bind to acetylcholine receptors, and it controls TNF-alpha release from uh, macrophages. This is just a further example of maldemaleda. So you can see this quite uh, macerated appearance is very uh, typical. They often get bacterial and fungal infections. Moving on to focal PPKs. So in focal panoplantar keratoderma, you get calluses uh, on the pressure areas. So these can be small calluses, as in the left panel, or they can be larger calluses, which are more confluent in the right panel. You always have sparing of the instep, and you always have sparing, in general, of the base of, of the toes. Uh, but you can have calluses on the toes or just below the base of the toes. The best known uh, type of focal keratoderma is Pachyneal congenita, which can be caused by dominant negative mutations in one of uh, five uh, keratin genes. So keratin 6A, 6B or 6C, or 16 and 17. Historically, Pachyneal congenita was classified into type one and type two, uh, but this is no longer the case because we know that all types of PC have cysts. So pre previously it was said type two had what was associated with cysts and type one was not. But we now know that all PC types get cysts, but some more than others. So Pachyneal Project, which is a patient uh, support group for uh, patients with Pachyneal congenita, um, got together a group of, of uh, dermatologists and scientists um, called the IPCCOR, uh, and they have been collecting uh, a lot of data. I should say we, as I have had quite a bit of involvement with Pachyneal Project, have been collecting a lot of data on patients with PC from throughout the world. And basically, in PC project currently, in the uh, registry, 40% uh, of patients have keratin 6A mutations, 33% uh, have keratin 16 mutations, 15% uh, have keratin 17 mutations, 9% have keratin 6B, 
and 3% have keratin 6C. And data supports three main features, uh, dystrophic toenails with at least one toenail involved, uh, plantar parotiderma and plantar pain. And if you want to read more, there is a gene reviews, which is free online on Pachyneca congenita, which was updated in November 2017. So here is uh, a panel of um, the plantar parotiderma in Pachyneca congenita. And you can see that it's extremely var variable. So some patients have a lot of callus, as in the bottom right, and some patients have smaller uh, calluses in the top center. Um, but all of these patients will have pain. And sometimes the patients with the smaller calluses have more pain than the patients with the more extensive callus. Um, in the center, you see the uh, typical uh, PC uh, nails with subungual hyperkeratosis. Uh, however, it can be variable. So for example, in the patient in the bottom left, uh, some of the toenails are uh, normal. Um, PC keratin 16 is more often associated with palmar parotiderma, and this can be uh, quite often striate extending along uh, the fingers. Oral leukokeratosis is most severe in PCK6A, uh, but it can be present in all types of PC. It can present with hoarseness in the first year of life caused by laryngeal uh, leukoperitosis, which you can see uh, in the bottom right. And this can actually uh, cause uh, airway obstruction if it's very severe. Uh, the cysts in Pachyneca congenita are very variable. So you can get steatocystomas, you can get epidermoid cysts, you can get follicular hyperkeratosis. You can get uh, bellus here cysts, uh, and you can get uh, malia. So PC keratin 6A is sort of the full house uh, type of PC. And uh, most patients have oral leukoperitosis. All 20 nails are thick and dark in 97%. About half have follicular hyperkeratosis. 58% have cysts. This is an earlier onset type of PC when you compare with keratin 17 and keratin 6B uh, mutations. These patients often have severe plantar pain, seven to 10 on a 10 point scale. So if you compare somebody with severe arthritis might have a, a, a score of eight out of 10. So these pa patients have very severe pain. Um, natal teeth are present in about 5%. There are particular problems in infants uh, with usually PCK6A. They may have feeding and uh, sucking problems with crying after a few uh, seconds. Um, there's also a phenomenon described called first bite pain, which lasts 15 to 25 seconds in children with PCK6A, normally between the age of four and 12. This is often misdiagnosed as an ear pain or an ear problem. Um, in the babies, enlarging the hole in the teeth may help. Um, the use of a syringe for feeding or a thickening formula with dietitian input. After the an initial crying, feeding can normally resume. In PCK6B, 98% have toenail issues, only 50% have fingernail involvement, 24% have oral keratosis. They quite frequently have cysts. It's a milder keratoderma, but they do have quite a bit of pain, and it's later onset, so sometimes the keratoderma may not appear uh, until the teenage years. PCK6C is probably underdiagnosed. They may just have a few nails involved. So for example, two to three nails, 24% have cysts. Uh, the plantar bit pain varies, but just, just because it's milder does not mean they have less plantar pain. Some of them have quite severe plantar pain. 
um, PCK16 almost all have affected toenails. Uh, they can have splinter hemorrhages, which is a specific feature. Um, less have cysts, so about 14% of follicular keratosis. Um, there's an earlier onset of plantar brachyderma versus keratin 17 or keratin 6B. The pain is can be vary from four to nine out of 10, and they have more palmar involvement, as I showed you in the earlier slide. Uh, PC keratin 17, and um, most have extensive cysts, including steatocystoma multiplex, 76% of the history of natal teeth. Plantar pain is variable. So there are some patients here who don't have much pain, but again, there are patients who have severe pain. Um, highly torti-like hair is not described in the IPCCR, but I have seen this present in some PCK17 patients, and it is described in papers. So PC can be associated with hydradenitis separativa. Um, a recent paper published in the BJD um, described a survey of the IPCRR, and 25.9% of patients reported HS-like uh, clinical features. 43% of those had PCK17. Patients with PC also have these structures called neurovascular structures, which are often misdiagnosed. And we don't know for sure that they're neurovascular structures, but they definitely seem to be vascular and they appear to be associated with nerves as they are extremely painful. And again, a survey of the IPCRR uh, showed that 62.3% reported neuro neurovascular structures and they were associated with significant pain in all PC subtypes. Um, and here you can see uh, on the left what they uh, look like. So basically there are bleeding points within the callus. And uh, if you pare them down, they're extremely painful. So they can appear superficially as uh, black dots. Itch can also occur with PC and many types of uh, parotoderma. Uh, so in a, again, in a survey of the, of, of the IPCRR, 37.2% uh, was the response rate and 68% reported that itch was a problem. This might be related to inflammation in the skin or it might be related to changes in the nerves in the skin. So itch quite frequently occurred under the calluses or around the calluses, and it sometimes affected unaffected skin. It also occurred around cysts. So Maria Marasso at the NIH uh, has shown that in the general population, that there are variations in Pachyneke congenitus genes cause accelerated uh, dental decay. And certainly it is my experience that some patients with PC seem to have um, accelerated decay. And they followed up the first paper in class genetics with a paper in the JID uh, showing anomal anomalies in a PC patient with PC keratin 16. So, Plantar pain of PC can have a major effect on mobility. And uh, Liat Samuelov uh, from Ellie's Breckers Group uh, had a look at a case cohort uh, of 815 patients uh, from the PC project uh, data. And 60% of the cases had uh, quite a lot of pain. And 19% of the cases used walking aids but only 2% reported complete inability to walk. So the differential diagnosis of PC or focal PPK is fairly broad. So I'm just going to give you a few examples. So Clouston uh, syndrome or hydrotic ectodermal dysplasia is caused by mutations in GJB6 or connexin therapy. And these patients can have nails which look quite like uh, congenita. They can also have um, plantar parotoderma. 
But the distinguishing features are they don't have as much pain and they also generally have hypertrichosis of the scalp hair and also of the eyebrows. Mutations in TRIPV3 cause Armstead uh, syndrome, which is a very severe uh, palmoplantar keratidine. Uh, TRIPV3 is a vanilloid receptor, which is important in itching and pain. So there is a milder phenotype of Armstead, also caused by mutations in TRIPV3, um, which can be confused with pathology congenita. And these patients get uh, quite severe uh, focal paratoderma with calluses. Uh, and you can see there's quite a bit of erythema actually as well, which might be a, a distinguishing feature in some cases. Um, also, this patient has this erythema and scale on the tips of the fingers and an angular chelitis. Um, and this would certainly be in the differential diagnosis of pachymic congenital. Um, focal and striate keratoderma can also be caused by mutations in the desmosomal protein desmodely in one. These patients generally have less pain, um, and quite often they have a striate keratoderma, particularly on the palms. Um, punctate keratoderma, uh, in general, the patients have small papular or beaded uh, papules. Um, it's more florid in manual uh, workers, and there's some association in some papers with malignancy. Um, the papules can coalesce and look focal. So, I mean, it is a variant of focal pressure. This is just a further example of punctate uh, pressure. Uh, about 50% of cases are caused by mutations in the AGAP gene, which encodes for P34 which is involved in epidermal growth factor receptor uh, signaling. In uh, black patients, uh, one can see uh, focal uh, PPK. Um, and here you can see uh, in the left panel and on the right panel, focal callosities, which are quite painful. Um, punctate uh, lesions can also occur uh, along the PAMR uh, creases, this is more common. In acrokeratoelastoidosis of costa, you see these little uh, papules on the medial aspect of the foot. And sometimes this, this can be associated with focal acral hyperkeratosis, with uh, hyperkeratosis extending onto the Achilles uh, tendon, as you see in these pictures. Top or tylosis with esophageal cancer also has a focal PPK. Top is caused by uh, mutations in a gene called RHBDF2, which encodes for IROM2. These patients have a focal PPK they have follicular papules, they have oral, loop, oral uh, white patches in the mouth, they have nail abnormalities, and they have an up to 95% lifetime risk of esophageal cancer. This condition is autosomal uh, dominant. It's interesting that it's quite like PC in some ways, apart from the esophageal cancer. And IROM2 actually binds to keratin 16 um, and they co uh, localize in keratinocytes. There are some uh, autosomal recessive nail dysplasias. So, for example, uh, this one caused by mutations in Frizzle 6, which is a component of the uh, Wench pathway which can present with 20 abnormal nails at birth. And this is often thought to be uh, acumenicate congenita, but genetic testing and the progress of the disease, i.e. they don't develop calluses on their feet, uh, eventually make the diagnosis. Uh, striate keratoderma um, can be caused by uh, mutations in desmodium one, 
Desmond back and Kershaw one or Kershaw uh, sixteen. Um, the non-syndromic type is generally autosomal dominant. Biopsy can be of value here in showing loss of cell to cell adhesion in patients with mutations in desmosomal genes. So, for example, desmodium 1 or desmoplacan. So, pamoplantic ratodermis can also occur in uh, syndromes. I've mentioned esophageal cancer. I'm just going to talk a little bit about PPK and cardiomyopathy because this is very important. So recessive striate PPK with cardiomyopathy, also known as Carvajal uh, syndrome, was first described in this family from uh, Ecuador. And these patients have striate keratoderma, they have woolly hair, they have cardiomyopathy of the left uh, ventricle. And this family turned out to have a mutation in the tail of de desmoplacan, which caused loss of protein expression. Um, Naxos disease, again, uh, the presentation can be uh, similar. Uh, these patients have woolly hair with cardiomyopathy affecting the right side of the heart. It's caused by mutations in placobulbin. Um, and homozygous individuals uh, develop arrhythmias, cardiac failure, and uh, sudden death. This is just a further patient with um, an autosomal dominant insertion mutation in uh, desmoplacan. Uh, she had a uh, striate a PPK. You can see it's quite striate even on the ball of her foot. Uh, she had woolly hair and a cardiomyopathy and died uh, suddenly in her teenage years. Um, Pivi Marathapu, who was a, a trainee who uh, did a PhD here with us, um, had a look at uh, patients with uh, cardiomyopathy who had uh, desmoplacan uh, mutations and examined their skin uh, phenotype and also the texture of their hair. And you can see uh, quite nicely here that um, patients who are affected all have curly hair, but it can vary in the degree of curliness. So. Uh, this patient here in the ses center, the hair looks more uh, woolly, whereas in the bottom, the patient in the middle, uh, the hair is just more curly than the two uh, siblings. Amoplantic ratoderma and deafness. And connects and 26 uh, mutations are the major global cause of non-syndromic recessive hearing loss. And uh, carrier frequency of common mutations is, is, is quite high in some populations. And dominant connexin 26 uh, mutations uh, can also cause uh, PPK. Uh, Bowinkle's um, syndrome begins in childhood. It's very rare. You see these shiny translucent papules on the palms. Uh, you can see starfish uh, keratoses uh, over the MCP joints. Um, sometimes they have uh, a pseudoinum or stricture around the finger. Uh, uh, they have hearing loss and mutations in connexin 26. Papillon Lefebvre uh, syndrome is an autosomal recessive PPK. These uh, patients have extensor psoriasiform plaques and a focal or diffuse PPK. They develop uh, periodontitis and lose teeth at an early age. This is one hamoplantic ratoderma, which is very responsive to uh, oral acetretin. Um, it's caused by uh, mutations in a pepsin uh, C. Um, schultz passage uh, syndrome is caused by mutations in WENT 10A. Uh, clues to this diagnosis might be uh, hypodontia, hypotrichosis, male abnormalities as shown here. So there's atrophy uh, of the males. 
and these apocrine uh, hydrocystomas around the, the eyes. Um, when you biopsy the PPK, you see eprine syringo fibroadenomatosis, which you can see here in the bottom right uh, panel. We described um, some families with the Chinese group with what we called plaque syndrome, which is a recessive PPK caused by um, mutations in a gene called CAST, which encodes alpha-statin. These patients have uh, peeling skin, they have acral keratosis, uh, leukonychia, uh, little pads over the interphalangeal uh, joints, and uh, chelitis. Alan Hovnanian's group uh, caused, uh, described uh, patients with heterozygous mutations in a gene called PERP, uh, which causes an Armstead syndrome like the phenotype with a periorificial uh, hyperkeratosis and a diffuse uh, mutilating uh, keratoderma. As you can see, uh, these kids also have very abnormal uh, hair. Um, and it turned out that um, PERP affects um, expression of uh, desmoplakin. This is a patient that I saw in clinic uh, a while back, maybe about 2014, with this verrucous uh, diffuse PPK uh, on the soles and less prominent keratoderma on the palms and white nails. He described that he had very uh, curly hair when he was young, which you can see up here on the top right picture and it was less uh, curly with age, but if he allowed it to grow, it would be quite curly. His uh, sister had very long uh, curly hair, which she said grew very fast. Um, we exome sequenced this family and we found that they had uh, a missense mutation, a gene called FAN83G. And this uh, mutation changed alanine to glutamic acid and was predicted to be uh, damaging. It was also highly conserved in all species. We knew that this was the right uh, gene mu mutation because uh, mutations in this uh, gene had pre previously been described as showing um, a woolly coat uh, phenotype in mice, and also showing uh, hyperkeratosis on the feet, or hereditary foot pad hyperkeratosis in uh, dogs. And if you look at the bottom right panel, you can see that the uh, dog with the hereditary foot pad hyperkeratosis also has uh, abnormal a hair texture compared with the dog on the right. Just to mention acrogenic uh, parastroma, it's proposed that this should be a uh, cystic fibrosis uh, related disorder, similar to uh, pancreatitis, disseminated bronchiectasis, and congenital absence of the vas uh, deferens. Um, people with this disorder describe acrogenic uh, wrinkling of the palms. So they put their hands in, the, in water and they get this sort of uh, sometimes papules, sometimes sort of peeling of the palms. The palms go very white. Uh, some of these patients will turn out to, to be uh, CF carriers or CF patients, unusually. Things that mimic PPK um, in older patients or in late presenting patients, you have to think of hyperkeratotic eczema, psoriasis, localized PRP occurs quite commonly in uh, children. Um, tinea can present as a, a diffuse keratosis. 
rarely mycosis fungoides can present as a diffuse hyperkeratosis. And in older people, um, you can get a paraneoplastic paratoderma, uh, which is sometimes confusingly called tylosis. These are two patients I was referred. The one on the left was query striate paratoderma, and she had psoriasis. And the one on the right was query focal paratoderma, and she had hyperkeratotic uh, discoid lupus and was ANA and Rho positive. So briefly, investigation and management of PPK. Um, so genetic testing can be performed if this is available uh, to you. Um, if the clinician is sure of the correct gene, for example, if you you're sure it's a keratin 9 mutation, you could just sequence keratin 9. Most, but mo most commonly now, people do uh, exome uh, sequencing and then look at a PPK panel, currently about 50 genes within that exome. And genome sequencing can also be performed, which would include non-coding uh, regions, but this isn't widely available. Um, genetic testing takes up quite a bit of data. So as, as you can see here, an exome is about 2.5 volumes of, of, of books. Um, so sometimes when patients are waiting for a result, they can't understand why it's taken such a long time. And I think why it's taken such a long time is sometimes it is uh, a lot, lot of data or it's not straightforward. If it's straightforward, generally they get the answer pretty quickly. So PPK is a chronic uh, condition which is hard to treat and empathy and support are important. Advising about supportive comfortable shoes, uh, special insoles might help some people um, and socks with uh, wicking or uh, silver socks can help if sweating is a problem. And many patients pare down their calluses with instruments of various types, including uh, scalpels, razor blades, things like ped eggs, um, etc. Um, some patients occasionally use uh, things containing urea or salicylic acid creams, um, which sometimes can help to an extent. Um, some patients can get polymicrobial infection. So for example, in Malda Maleda, uh, bleach soaks may be helpful as for eczema and treat with antibiotics or antifungals as per swabs and scrapings. Oral retinoids can be used, uh, for example, acetretin. I would say that in general, apart from Papillon Lefebvre and some patients with diffuse PPK, most patients do not find these helpful. An occasional one does, but generally at low dose. Uh, and obviously there are problems with prescribing this in females of childbearing age uh, because acetretin is teratogenic and a washout period of three years is recommended. Alatretinone has a shorter washout period and has been used successfully and reported in punctate teratoderma uh, shown here and also in mild and maleda uh, keratoderma, but I wouldn't say it was transformational, I mean, it helped a bit. Um, in acetylcysteine, uh, I have not prescribed personally, although uh, I know some patients who have purchased it in herbal or natural uh, medicine stores over the counter. It does reduce hyperkeratosis and also does this in ichthyosis. Uh, the main side effect is headache in some patients, um, dizziness and nausea. It can also be made up as a special at a concentration of 5 to 10 percent. Um, for patients with uh, painful uh, keratodermas, so for example, Pachyleta congenita or Almstead or um, painful punctic keratoderma, they may require uh, regular analgesics. Um, amitriptyline, gabapentin, or pregabellin can sometimes be prescribed for uh, neuropathic pain. 
Um, some patients with uh, PC uh, find uh, benefit from uh, cannabis or alcohol. Uh, botulinum toxin can sometimes help the pain and also reduce callus. Um, capsation patches and lignocaine patches are also used by some patients. The other option is consult with a pain specialist. So pathogenesis of PPK and future treatments, and I am almost done. Um, basically, when PPK happens, you get an alarm and response. So you get activation of all sorts of pathways involved in inflammation, including the epidermal growth factor receptor, the JAK-STAT pathway, and the mTOR pathway. And Sonia Lehman from Aachen has shown that mitochondria in Pachyonychia congenita are abnormal, they're sort of tired. So mitochondria, as you know, are the energy source for the cell. Um, Roger Kaspar with PC Project uh, showed that uh, topical rapamycin might be helpful in various ways. It decreases proliferation, decreases angiogenesis, and directly targets keratin 6A mRNA. And currently, uh, a company called Palvella Therapeutics are enrolling to the VAPA study, which is a study evaluating the safety and efficacy of a, of a special preparation of rapamycin in adults with moderate to severe pachynechia congenita. So in, in Olmsted, you can get abnormalities uh, where you do have uh, abnormalities in the TRIP-V3 receptor. In pachynechia congenita and punctate PPK, you can also get abnormalities in the epidermal growth factor receptor and they, uh, both of these receptors are closely related and um, TRIP-V3 actually enhances keratinocyte proliferation by activating EGF. So inhibiting the EGF receptor is also a possible strategy. And this is a patient of mine with Olmsted, the milder form uh, with a TRIP-V3 mutation that I have treated with um, erlotinib. And you can see there's been some improvement in his hyperkeratosis and his foot is less red on the right hand side. But the striking thing was the dramatic improvement in his pain, which I measured with this foot function index. So you can see his foot function index on the left was 89.4% and it reduced to 10.58% um, after a month or two on erlotinib. His Pain, he said, improved after 24 hours. So um, Celine Bottomer and her group uh, have also described uh, treatment of pachynechia congenita with BGF receptor inhibitors, uh, showing decrease in pain, callus, and improved quality of life. SIRNA uh, therapies or gene silencing is experimental. Um, Roger Kaspar has shown that you can make siRNAs to specifically target the mutant keratin 6A. So in the cell on the left, you've got uh, mutant keratin in green and wild type in red. And on the right, we've, he's targeted the uh, mutant keratin 6A with siRNA. And you can see you get a normal uh, keratin network. Um, there are several reports now in, in uh, diseases like haemophilia, for example, of successful RNAi therapy. So this is a possibility for the future. Pierre Coulomb's lab has shown that pachynechia congenital skin is in a state of redox imbalance with decreased glutathione and decreased NERF2 and sulforaphane, which is derived from broccoli, um, seems to improve this. So this is a further possible uh, treatment or keratoderma. And um, just to put in a word for a uh, Pachyonychia Congenita project, um, this is a US-based charity which provides support for patients, including information on the website site, genetic testing for CP, PC patients worldwide, uh, and uh, patient support uh, meetings. So in summary, I guess my take home points are consider a diagnosis of PC, in patients with focal keratoderma and plantar pain. 
consider a desmosomal gene mutation in patients with paratoderma and woolly or curly hair and screen for cardiomyopathy. Um, late onset PPKs are often inflammatory. Start with a low dose of acetretin, rule out tinea, and genetic testing, if you can get it, might be important for future treatment. Um, I would just like to acknowledge my patients, Monty and Bill, for the invitation to speak, PC Project and patients, and all of the scientists here, particularly Francis Smith, Erwin McLean, uh, Jan and Holly from PC Project, uh, David Kelsel and his team. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Tool, for that really insightful talk. And um, I just wonder how many patients around the world might be getting misdiagnosed. Patients with PPK might be getting misdiagnosed as psoriasis, for example. Um, it really makes you think that we're very lucky to have people like you and genetic testing available to us. Um, I'm going to just start off. We've got about 10 minutes for questions, so I'm just going to start off. Um, you mentioned that the PC project was collecting data on genetic mutations around the world. And I just wonder in, you know, with the data that we have right now, is a certain ethnic group more prone to PC? And um, if so, is there a specific mutation that you're finding that's more common in these patients? So there are some uh, common or hotspot uh, mutations in packing congenita, <clears throat> but, um, there are patients throughout the world with PC. So there are Chinese patients, there are South American patients, there are American patients, there are patients from Europe. So there are patients from India, Pakistan, worldwide. Um, okay, and um, Dr. Damsky had a question. I don't know if, if you want to mention it in person or if yeah. you want me to read it out. No, no, thank you, Monty. Um, well, thank you so much for such a wonderful talk. It really was just such a phenomenal overview, and, and thank you so much. Um, I was struck by um, the association that you mentioned between um, PC and hydroadenitis supertiva, and I'm just curious if you have any thoughts on potentially pathogenesis, and then sort of a related question whether or not, you know, cysts that patients may develop are anitis for that, or if they're totally unrelated. Yeah, so I think there are, so obviously in, in uh, patients with PC keratin 17, which was the largest group, PC keratin 17, uh, keratin 17 is highly expressed in the spacious gland and it's also expressed in the hair follicle. So it might make sense that you might get inflammation um, in the flexures, for example, the underarm area. Um, in patients with uh, PCK17. Um, the genetic basis of hydradenitis superativa, I think, is understood in about maybe 10% of patients. Um, so it's quite possible, I think, that some of the, those patients may have PC keratin 17 some of the undiagnosed patients. Interesting. I think you had another question as well. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to go again. Um, so I, you know, the, um, you mentioned that um, black patients can get the punctate um, palmoplantar keratoderma. And I feel like I see that not uncommonly. And I was just, I was curious if um, you have any tips for management or, you know, how do, how do you, um, you know, approach management in, in such a patient? So, so black patients that I see can have four things. So they can have punctate keratoses along the palmar creases, which some people, it may not bother them at all. They just think it's just part of life and other people may be more bothered by it. Then you've got the people who've got acrokeratoelastoidosis, so they've got the papules on the medial aspect of the feet and quite often on the, uh, around the uh, edge of the thenar eminence, sometimes extending onto the flexor aspect of the wrist. Then you've got the patients with the focal, focal acral hyperkeratosis who have um, hyperkeratosis over the accolades tendon. Uh, sometimes they've got 
uh, callosities over the MCP joints. And quite often they have the punctate keratoses on the palms as well. Um, and then finally, you've got a group who have a focal keratoderma with very small calluses, which are really, really painful. And I've seen about five of those. Um, and I think for the patients who just have the punctate papules uh, along the um, palmar creases, I would start off with advising things like um, salicylic acid ointment. So uh, we've got uh, CeraVe SA, for example, which has a small amount of 10% uh, um, salicylic acid. We can also prescribe specials, which have a higher percentage of um, salicylic acid. Uh, sometimes people scrape up them. Uh, sometimes people describe trying to dig out the, the keratotic papule, which I don't think helps actually, to be honest. Um, I haven't ever tried someone like that on astretin to see if that helps. I recall, thank you. That was so helpful. Yeah, I remember uh, one patient in particular when I was a, a resident that had the um, punctate lesions along the palmar creases and was really bothered by it. And that, that patient did end up on acid treatment, but there wasn't really um, much effect. No effect. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's uh, I'm going to ask a question along the kind of uh, along the same lines, uh, lines, not limes. Um, you mentioned uh, some patients with PPK have an, uh, have associated steatocystoma multiplex. Now, that can be quite a debilitating condition for some patients and really affects their quality of life. Any management tips for that? Um, anything at all? Um, so steatocystoma multiplex is actually a tricky problem. And I've just got funding actually from the Leo Foundation and the postdoc just started two weeks ago to do single cell RNA sequencing and spatial RNA sequencing in steatocystomas from patients with PCK17. So more will be re revealed in due course. So next year's talk by you will be on this. Um, Maybe just... five years time, you know, <laughs> how quick science happens. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, we've got time for one more question and we've just got that in the Q&A. Ahmed Khalil asks, any role of current biologics in treating many of these cases? Any upcoming biologics in the pipeline? Um, I would think actually JAK inhibitors might be more helpful than biologics, particularly the topical ones. I think they definitely have to be tried. Okay. I feel like... Everyone's talking about jack inhibitors these days. Um, okay, great. Well, thank you so much. Um, I don't know if anyone has any other questions, but if not, I think we can let you go. Thank you. Great. Thanks everyone for tuning in as usual. It will be recorded and available on YouTube by tomorrow, I think. Thank you. Bye. Bye.